I think it's fair to say that we have all experienced some kind of toothache in our lives. To me, it's so common to hear patients being kept awake for many sleepless nights from excruciating toothache. In fact, many women have told me that their toothache is worse than labor pain. We often think of toothache as something that occurs only in the mouth. But did you know that the pain from a toothache can also spread to the jaw joint, the ear, and even the eye socket. Did you know that severe toothache can sometimes cause absorbing intense migraine-like headaches? On the other hand, did you know that toothache may not be caused by a tooth? It can be a sign of heart attack, sinus infection, a disorder with the jaw joint and its surrounding muscles, a manifestation of trigeminal neuralgia, cluster headache, or even cancer. And did you know that even after a tooth has been removed, you may still feel pain in that phantom tooth? My name is Dr. Angeline Lee, and I'm a specialist in endodontics, also known as a root canal specialist. As a root canal specialist, my job is to treat root canal diseases that are usually caused by inflammation and infection in and around the tooth root. I would like to take you all with me as we look into the hidden world behind chronic pain from a dentist's perspective. Toothache is often caused by inflammation and infection in the root canal or structures around the root, causing damage and overstimulation of the tooth nerves or nerves around the tooth root. You may be surprised that if root canal diseases are left untreated, spread of root canal infection can potentially be life-threatening, resulting in brain abscess, blockage of the airway, or even abscess in the chest. Now let's look at a pain pathway so we gain a better understanding about toothache. When the nerve of the tooth is injured or sensitized during inflammation and infection, these nerves become dysfunctional and send erratic pain signals through the central nervous system to our brain cortex where pain is being received and processed. This part of the brain cortex is known as somatosensory cortex. Central nervous system is made up of nerves inside the spine and the brain. So basically, pain signals from the tooth nerve goes into the spine and the spinal nerves then carry the pain signals from the tooth to the brain to tell something is wrong with the tooth. No matter how great a dentist is, studies have shown us that around three to four patients out of about a hundred that have been treated return to their dentist saying that the root canal treatment performed on their teeth did not work. Though to us, the treatment seems absolutely perfect. The patient still complains about the pain. I had a patient in her 60s who was referred to me for a second opinion. The story started with her suffering from a severe dull ache in one of her lower molars. The pain even spread to the back of her lower jaw. An endodontist colleague treated the painful tooth with root canal treatment. With perfectly treated root canals, the patient went home happily, but only to return a few days later with even more pain in the tooth and the jaw. Her endodontist puzzled, but retreated the same tooth with another round of root canal treatments in case the first one wasn't performed well enough. The patient then went home and guess what? The pain just would not go away. She returned again, still pointing at the same tooth. Oh well, my colleague said to her, I'm sorry, this tooth cannot be saved. We'll have to take the tooth out. So the tooth was taken out. Three months later, the patient was referred to me for a consultation. I'm sure most of you by now would have guessed what happened. So we took x-rays and 3D scans to ensure that we had not missed anything. Physically, there was nothing wrong at all. The tooth had been entirely removed and with it the assumed source of the pain. Even the wound from the tooth extraction had completely healed. <laughs> Nevertheless, the patient continued to insist that the tooth egg came from the same site where the painful tooth was. Some of you may have heard about a phenomenon called phantom limb pain. 
in the 16th century, a French surgeon who operated on wounded soldiers first reported this strange phenomenon. He noticed a group of soldiers who had had their wounded limbs amputated still felt an ongoing sensation of pain coming from the part of the limb that was no longer there. The limb was gone, but the pain was still there and it was real. In fact, this is now reported as a very common phenomenon found after limb amputation. Just like phantom limb pain, phantom tooth pain like that of the woman I mentioned earlier is not that uncommon after all. With no apparent source, how can this pain be explained? Perhaps the key to this mystery is in one interesting thing phantom limb and phantom tooth pain have in common. Researchers have discovered that most of the patients who complain of phantom pain have suffered severe pain for a long time before their operation, which is limb amputation in the former and root canal treatment and extraction in the latter. Over the years, we have had many great pain researchers around the world discovering enlightening information about the mechanisms involved in this phenomenon. We found that this phantom pain is the result of overstimulated central nervous system sending erratic signals to the brain cortex, saying that there is pain in a tooth or limb that may no longer be there. Furthermore, if the brain itself keeps on receiving high intensity, repeated or continuous pain signals for a long time, the part of the brain responsible for pain can actually undergo changes in its structure and organization, a bit like rewiring of the brain cortex. So this part of the brain no longer functions and behaves in a normal fashion. The problem now isn't with the treated root canal, the extracted tooth, nor the amputated limb, but in the dysfunctional central nervous system and the rewired brain cortex. The pain is genuine, not imaginary. I'm sure you have come across people suffering from chronic jaw pain, chronic lower back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, headache, etc. Oftentimes, these people have already made numerous visits to their doctors have already been referred to and seen by many different specialists and have had lots of diagnostic investigations performed on them, such as blood tests, x-rays, CT scans, MRI, ultrasounds, you name it, but nothing wrong can be found with them. These people often feel extremely frustrated, angry, helpless, and hopeless. Many also end up suffering with depression and anxiety. Perhaps worst of all, they get stigmatized as being lazy or even hypocrites by society because on the outside, they look perfectly healthy and normal. Taking all this into account, the treatment of chronic pain has to involve an interdisciplinary approach. Tackling chronic pain usually involves medications, physiotherapy, lifestyle changes, psychology, advanced pain intervention, surgery intervention, complementary and alternative medicine like acupuncture in various combinations. However, at best, this treatment can only reduce or help patients cope to live with the pain. There's no known cure for chronic pain. While there's no cure, the least we can do to help is to show our understanding and to lend our support to those suffering from chronic pain. And the best way to prevent chronic pain is to stop the acute pain effectively as soon as it occurs. Don't wait until the pain becomes too severe or too late. We must cut off the feeding loop of the pain circuit to prevent the brain cortex from being rewired and the central nervous system from becoming dysfunctional. Next time, when you experience a toothache, rush to your dentist. However, don't be frustrated if the dentist finds the pain to be nothing to do with your teeth. Your dentist can still help you. Thank you.